grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Beloved in the Lord, today we will meditate from the word of God as written in the letter of James, chapter 1, verse 2 to 8. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face many kinds of trials, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, I pray for all your children all over the world who hear your word today. Invade the heads of my audience and cause them to understand your word. Capture their hearts and capture their minds that they may feel you and be not distracted but focused. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear God's people, to be true to ourselves, we know that there are times when we don't know what to do. Moments of confusion catch up with everybody in life. Sometimes they catch up with you, sometimes you run into them. Some of us woke up today not certain of what to do with our lives. Many are bored by the lockdown measures. Many are bored with the social distancing. Many are bored with a thorn in their flesh, sickness. They have tried one doctor after the other. They have gone to some counselor after the other. Many have physical and psychological problems. Many governments are suffering with upheavals on the streets, crisis, civil wars. And sometimes the leaders of our nations are confused and they don't know what to do. And you know what? The COVID-19 that has come has made matters worse. It is because of this that I invite you to reflect on the theme, what to do when you don't know what to do. What do you do when you are confused? What do you do when you don't think there is anybody to turn to and ask one or two questions? When you think life is ebbing away and you just have to give up? Dear God's people, today, we happen to read a little portion of a letter written by James, the brother of Jesus Christ and leader of the church in Jerusalem in the first century. The first readers of this letter were Jewish 
Christians living in Gentile communities outside Palestine. And the letter, by the grace of God, has been kept, preserved, to now be read by all other Christians all over the world, including you and I. And in this letter, James expresses his concern for persecuted Christians. And contrary to what some teach, that being a Christian gives immunity to tough times, James declares that a Christian must expect being jostled by trials and temptations. Yes, they will come. They will try us. He says the Christian should consider it pure joy when he faces multiple trials. When. He uses the word when. Be sure about this. The storms of life will come. Could be in the form of sorrows, in the form of disappointments which seek to take our faith away. Could be in the form of seductions that want to lure us into indecent and immoral behavior. Maybe in the form of slanderers who surround us and bearers of false witnesses whose intentions are to quench our spirit of commitment. The Apostle Peter cautions when he says, if you suffer, it should not be as a murderer. It should not be as a thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler in the affairs of other people. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15. Isaiah had also prophesied this earlier, that God's children will face storms. And he wrote down in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, saying, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Isaiah 43, verse 2. Like James, Isaiah doesn't say, if you pass through. He says, when. Meaning that, Troubles are inevitable. Troubles are unavoidable. In this life, you cannot avoid either running into trouble or sometimes receiving trouble when it comes. In spite of their faith, let me show you. In spite of their faith in God, look at this, these people of faith that we read in the Bible, what they suffer. He said, in spite of their faith, Daniel still faced the lions. He was thrown in the lion's den in spite of his faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego still entered the fairy furnace of Nebuchadnezzar. In spite of his faith, Joseph was still thrown into prison. What do you have more? Job was still afflicted. He still lost all that he held dear and precious in his life. Of course, the disciples still faced persecution. And Jesus was still tormented and crucified. I know that you may still be suffering some kind of affliction in your life. Some are suffering in their marriages, enduring the marriage life instead of enjoying it. Some are suffering joblessness while others are suffering in the job. Some are suffering because they cry day and night for the fruit of the womb. You may have done your best, but nothing seems to work, my friend, as planned. That's what I call confusion. 
confusion might have set in in your life. What to do? What do you do then when you don't know what to do? The brother of Jesus, the leader of the Jerusalem church, gives us some wise counsel when he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, in other words, <clears throat> if you are confused, if you do not know what to do, ask God for wisdom. In Psalm 50, where the mighty one, God himself, speaks and summons the whole earth, he says, Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Psalm 50, verse 15. And in Psalm 91, the psalm that the devil quoted when he was tempting Jesus, God says there of the people who love him, he says in verse 14 and 15, he shall call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And to prophet Jeremiah, he said, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. God is ready to give us the ability to confuse our problems, to handle them. God is ready to clear our confusion and make us emerge victorious. You know, Jesus Christ even told his disciples, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, keep knocking and the door will be opened to you in Luke chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. So I urge you, my friend, call and ask God for the ability to make wise decisions in difficult circumstances. Because those difficult circumstances will abound. Call and ask God for practical discernment. Look at the example of Solomon. When he was given a chance to, to have anything in the world that he would like when God literally gave him a blank check and asked him to fill in all that he wants Solomon asked for wisdom he said your servant is young he doesn't have the ability to rule these people and so God give to your servant a discerning heart that's what they call wisdom a discerning heart in other words He's asking God to make him able to govern his people well, to make right decisions. We read that in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. He didn't ask God for many servants, so he will walk less. No. He didn't ask God to be surrounded by wise technical advisors so that they would do the job for him. No. He asked God for wisdom to carry out his own task by himself. He asked God for wisdom. He didn't ask God to do his job. Wisdom makes a man not to ask God to do for him what God wants to do through him. Wisdom makes a man not to fold his arms and ask God to go do the work. God wants to use you, my friend. He wants to use us. So we ask him for wisdom to know what to do and the courage to push through. And he will speak. I know he's speaking to you, to guide you. He says, your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, New Living Translation. When the people of Israel love God's way, he will usually correct them. 
he will call them back. The voice will whisper from behind them, telling them what way to go. God will do the same for anyone who hears his voice of correction and willingly follows. That is wisdom. You are listening to him. He's using his servant to speak to you today. There will be that voice that coming to everybody. God is the same. The days of Isaiah, in our days and in the future, he doesn't change. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You ask God for wisdom. And James says, in asking, you must believe. You do not doubt. The one who asks in doubt is like a drunkard who is just moving, crisscrossing the road and going nowhere, staggering. But when you ask, what do you believe? You believe that God cares. You believe that God will guard his people in times of danger. You believe that the Lord will provide for the needs of his children. Yes. And you know, you also believe that God is faithful to his promises. What God says he will do, that is what he will do. My brother and my sisters, yes, you who is watching, the storms of life will come, even like COVID-19, that has put the entire universe in confusion. It will affect even the believers. But God has asked us to call on him. World leaders are confused. There are conflicting theories about this COVID-19 thing. In the midst of all that differing explanations, people are dying. God has asked us to call on him. So I urge you today, invite God and tell him about your powerlessness in the face of your own specific problem. Invite God and tell him about your confusion in the midst of the challenges you are going through. You know, when we, when statesmen visit our communities and talk to us, and we present to them our worries. We don't have water, we don't have light. Usually, when they speak to us, they say, we have heard your problems. We will carry them to the higher authorities. We will take them to the appropriate bodies. God does not take our worries to hierarchy. God does not promise that he will take our problems to the powers that be because God is all of that. He is hierarchy, he is the power that be, and he is more. If you reach him, you will not go beyond. I remember when Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, was faced with an with an incoming war by the three kings of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, when he stood in the house of God and said, God, we do not have the power to confront this vast army. We are powerless. God, we do not know what to do. We are confused. But our eyes are on you. Was it not Jesus who said, come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. What are you waiting for? He has invited, come, I will give you rest. I will lessen the burden for you. I will take it away or I will empower you to cope with it. David understood this and captured it when he was writing Psalm 50. He said, my eyes are, in Psalm 25 he said, my eyes are on you. My eyes are always, my eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. God will release your foot from the trap of the evil one. 
Psalm 25 verse 15. God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present help in troubled times. Friends, we have a being to run to. Folks, we have a God who cares. The only one who walks on the waters. Nature is under his feet. The only being who speaks to the storm. And you know what? The winds obey him. He says, peace be still. And calm returns in the midst of the storm. Hard times do not have the final say in your life. Don't give up. Yahweh has. He saved Job. He saved Noah. He saved Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He, he still put Joseph where he had planned to put him. So, ask him to do the same for you, and he will do it. What to do when you do not know what to do is to turn to the Lord. Who will turn everything around for your good. God bless you. Amen.